Hi Flosstube, I'm Rachel, Stitchy Rach, here on Flosstube and on Instagram. It is Friday the 8th of July and this is a YouTube channel about cross stitch. Hi everyone, how are you doing? It's been two weeks since I've been here, or a little under two weeks actually, wasn't it? Because I filmed on a Monday last time, yeah. Yeah. So it's been about 10 days since I saw you and I am here to give you a stitchy update. Uh, welcome along if it is your first time here. I hope you will stick around and thank you very much if you have come back to watch me again um, and if you've subscribed or liked or commented on any of my videos. I'm getting really bad at responding to comments but I do read them all and I will try and get better about replying. It's just been so busy at the moment. Um, yeah, it's been really busy. My um, Two of my children finished school today last day term before the summer holidays which means if any of you have children you know those last few weeks are just crackers aren't they just running around to all the events all the things um which what I've been doing for the last 10 days and uh yeah so haven't had huge amounts of time to stitch so not huge amounts of progress on anything I've got to show you um but hopefully it will calm down um, and I think now that I've become a parent, at the last day of term, I get that end of term feeling I used to get when um, I was younger, I think. Um, it's quite nice. So, yeah, and I think I'll probably cry this afternoon. So my youngest child leaves nursery today, uh, starts school properly in September. And all my three children have been through the same nursery and it's the nursery attached to the school so it has a proper teacher and it um, only works in term time so it wouldn't suit everyone but it suits me and they've had the same nursery teacher and they've all just had such a fantastic experience and today is my last day there as a parent and so for the first time in seven years so, so for seven years I've basically taken a child there every single day, every single school day. And so it feels like the end of an era for me as well. So I'm probably, and my baby's growing up, so I'll probably be a little bit emotional, which is a bit silly. I never used to be like this before as a mother. And <laughs> now I cry at everything. And my other child still has two weeks. So he is grumpy AF, to put it mildly, um, that his sisters are having two weeks off before him. But, you know, it is what it is. So uh, still still the school run for a couple more weeks, but hopefully life will just relax a little bit. Some of the after school clubs and things are stopping this week. I've got some that are carrying on, but just life should be a little less hectic after this week. That doesn't mean there's going to be more stitching time because there's going to be three kids at home. Um, but just the running around everywhere, trying to do all the things. It's been quite hard over the last... I'd say months, it's just been so busy and I think because everything stopped for two years and people haven't had a chance to do the things that everyone's like really going for it this year, all the things, which is wonderful, but also just, I don't know if I'm coming or going, I really don't. Last week I was out three nights, I think the week before I was out three nights, this week I've, yeah, it's just been, it's just been utterly, utterly crackers, but what can you do? So... I'm actually here to talk to you about cross stitch. This is a YouTube channel about cross stitch, if I didn't say that earlier. And I've said nothing about cross stitch yet. So I say I don't have huge amounts to show you. Um, I have two whips, which you can probably, if you've been here before, you can tell me already what they are because they're the same things I've shown you for the last few videos. And then I have a new start. And that's it. I don't have any haul. I I don't have any haul. I've just remembered that the spring issue of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher, not the spring, sorry, the summer issue of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher has landed. And the reason I haven't thought about that as haul is because I get a digital subscription to it. Um, but I forgot to print off anything and I haven't really had a proper look through it yet. So maybe we'll do that next time. Maybe we'll talk about what my favourite patterns out of that were next time. Um, I was meant to have a tiny bit of haul. My um, Classic Colourworks Thread Club from Lakeside Needlecraft should have been here by now. And I got an email from Royal Mail saying they were delivering it on Thursday and it never turned up. And it hasn't turned up in today's post either. So I'm hoping it's not lost somewhere. I don't think it is. Because it has a tracking number. And the tracking number is just saying 
it's not delivered, but that it should have been delivered two days ago. Well, not yes, two days ago, yesterday, which is like two posts ago. So, yeah, I'll keep you posted on that one. But so no, yeah, no haul, um, no finishes, obviously. Uh, and we can touch on some plans, but I don't really have any. So I think this one will be short today. I think it will be short. I don't think I'm doing an early school run. I think my husband's doing that. So after I finish this, I might go and get a bit of stitching. Oh, I've got some knitting. I've got some knitting as well. See, I'm a bit... This is what my life's been like this week. Just a bit scrambled in the brain. I haven't made any notes, which probably isn't helping. So yeah, maybe I'll get a little bit more stitching because it's the last day of term, which I know isn't because one of them's got two more weeks, but because it's my last kind of child-free day before September, I'm kind of just sacking it all off. <laughs> I've kind of sacked off all my jobs. Apart from I did do the shopping this morning, so I haven't fully sacked it off. I did do the shopping this morning. And I have taken my car to the garage because um, I got a puncture a few weeks ago, I don't know if I told you. I got a puncture a few weeks ago, it's quite normal around here because I live in the middle of the countryside and we have terrible roads and really bad potholes. So it's just the cost of doing business out here that I get through a few tyres a year. But um, and while I can, I, I can't change it, I drive a big Land Rover, I can't jack that thing up. So. It's had the spare on for weeks and I finally got round to uh, take it up to the garage so they can put um, put the new tyre on the wheel and swap it all over. Anyway, so that is being done today so I'll have to go back up to the garage at some point and rescue my car from there. But other than that I have kind of just sacked it off today. But it's really nice here, it's really lovely hot sunny day, it was 27 degrees on my car as I was driving it up to the garage. Uh, so lovely, but I'm one of those Brits who's like, oh, it's too cold, oh, it's too hot. I'm, uh, you know, Princess and the Pea, or Goldilocks, I want it just right. Um, so I've been sat in the sitting room with the French windows open, so next to outside. But uh, yeah, it was a bit too hot to come and sit actually outside, which is rather lame of me, I do appreciate that. But anyway, and then... I don't know how much stitching there'll be tomorrow either because no Saturday swimming stitching because it's my eldest speech day which is on a Saturday. So I have to get all dolled up, like it's proper formal things. So I've got to put on, you know, heels, dress, full makeup, straighten the hair, all the things that you don't want to do on a hot day in July. And go and sit and clap other people's kids getting prizes. Um, probably for two hours while trying to entertain two small children. I'm taking headphones and iPads. I make no excuses for this. There's, there's no other way to deal with it. Uh, but on the upside, after that, we're going to some other parents' house who we're friends with for a barbecue. So that will be nice. So probably not much stitching tomorrow either. Um, so for those of you that are fans of Saturday Swimming Stitching on Instagram, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know about Saturday Swimming Stitching. I take my stitching with me to my kids' swimming lesson every Saturday and every week I post a little um, progress photo from the side of the pool. So yeah, so no, none of that tomorrow and uh, I can't take my stitching to the speech day. I might be able to smuggle in some knitting. That's my plan at the moment. I might be able to smuggle in some knitting, but we'll see. Right, shall we crack on with some whips because I've now waffled for ooh, nearly nine minutes and not said very much. Okay, looks. so first whip, first whip is been here before you'll know what this is I'm just trying to find the cover sheet it is seize the day by caterpillar cross stitch this is available on their website which I will put a link to below uh, I don't think I have before and after pictures this week I don't think I was organized enough so I'm really sorry I'm not going to insert pictures I'm just going to do a really rough and ready edit on this today sorry not sorry um, but anyway I can't actually fully remember where it was when I showed it to you 10 days ago, but I have a reasonable idea of what I've done. Anyway, here is where I've got to. So I know it's folded over a bit at the bottom, but you're not really missing much, and what I've been working on is up here. So I think since you last saw it, I've finished the sun, done the cloud, done that. It's really swinging, isn't it? Sorry. I've done that barbecue and the flake in the top of the ice cream and I'm working on these sand dunes up here. Had to pull some of those out because 
when I started this in 2019, I'd done it wrong. Um, and I could have fudged it, but I just, it was actually just easier to pull it out and start to try and fudge it. So this is stitched on a 32 count Belfast linen in the colour Gold Rush by Crafty Kitten Fabrics, who um, aren't trading anymore, so I'm sorry you can't get your hands on this. But it is very similar, I would say, in colour to linens by Northumberland Sampler House. They have quite a few kind of golden -y neutrals and I will also link them in the description box below there on Etsy. Um, so if you did want a nice kind of neutral golden linen, that's that would probably be my first guess. Um, Caterpillar Cross Stitch also recommend uh, a, a kind of a pale yellow, which I think you can buy this as a kit and then they would supply the... <clears throat> The yellow fabric they supply but it's not this and it's stitched all in dmc i've made a few couple of modifications nothing massive um this beach towel here is stitched in a jodry designs thread of the month which i think was called heat wave from a few years ago and then the only other modification is that the face that sorry the sun as it's charted i don't know if you can see that has a face in it and a child I am stitching this for <clears throat> quite sensibly in my opinion doesn't like faces in the sun which neither do I personal opinion personal choice but I, I am not a massive fan so no face in the sun but it is getting there as you can see I feel I've nearly finished the beach section yet I'm ignoring that there's a sky section I'm pretending it's just the beach and the sea still a little bit more to go but it's we're getting there, we're getting there. I'm going on holiday during the school summer holidays and I might take this. It's quite easy to stitch on. It's nice big blocks of colour. Um, 32 count, so I don't really need to worry about lighting. Um, so that's a possibility to come with us on our holes. Uh, yeah, we'll see. But if you've been here before, you will know that I am not a great holiday stitcher, which feels so weird. I know so many people who I'm friends with on Instagram, who I watch on YouTube, and like, I'm going on holiday, and it's so much stitching, da da da. And I think that, and then I go on holiday and I take my stitching and it never comes out of the case. I'm just not a holiday stitcher. I can't explain it. It's not. I think it's just because stitching's part, so much part of my day to day routine. There's hardly any days I don't stitch at home, so I just wonder if. You know, that holiday, do something different. I often read and play board games. and So we'll see. We'll see what happens in terms of holiday stitching. So that was that. And I'm going to take that out this afternoon to a uh, piano lesson that my kids got. So that will get some love this afternoon. Then, then the beast. The beast. Again, if you have been here before, you know exactly what this is. And if you don't, you're like, why is that woman weaving a stupidly big piece of fabric around? This is my Peanuts Afghan. This is one of my focus pieces for this year. I want it finished. I want this finished. So I've been plugging away on this since you last saw me. And this is going to show you how little stitching has been done since I last saw you. So I am still on the same block. I was on when you saw me 10 days ago. It is much advanced and I am kind of sorry it isn't finished, but it's not. So I say, I don't think I've got before and after photos, but if you're that interested, you can go back to my last video. But here is where that block is now. There we go, it is so close to being finished. Can you see how close that is? So all of Snoopy himself is done. I know it's difficult to tell at the bottom, but he is, all the stitches are in, and they've literally got a little bit of blue filling and the back stitching to do. And then that whole block will be done. I reckon there's probably one night's work left in there. Not even that, because last night I basically did from the top of his foot down, like all that got done last night. So the back stitching and those few lines are absolutely nothing. And I was really hoping it would be finished by today because it's a new start today, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, but my goal was to get this block done before then. I, 
I semi. I think I might have even said in my last video that maybe I could have finished the whole thing before I filmed this, which is was patently ludicrous with everything that's going on in life. Um, but I do wish I'd finished this. I was really pushing to finish it last night, and I just I just couldn't get there. I just couldn't get there. But I, it's nearly there. It's nearly there. And once this is finished. There are only two more squares on this afghan left and then it is done. It is finito bonito. Um, what do I need to tell you about this? So for those of you that haven't been here before, this is a massive afghan blanket that is covered in Snoopy and the Peanuts gang. Um, I'm not going to show it all now. I very rarely show the whole thing because it is unwieldy and very difficult to show. And now that we're so close to the end, I'm going to wait for a big reveal once it's all all done because I'm quite proud of it. I'm super proud of it. Um, but it's stitched on eight um, Zweigart and Afghan fabric. Uh, I don't think it comes in different counts but just in case it does this is um, 18 count if you're stitching one over one, uh, sorry if you're stitching over one and nine count if you're stitching over two. This is stitched four strands of DNC over two threads of Afghan fabric. So they are big old X's. Can I get it any closer? Can you see how big those X's are? They are big old X's. Um, I uh, The patterns for this blanket come from a range of pamphlets that I bought on eBay. They are all out of print. This specific block is from this book, Peanuts in Cross Stitch. They're all kind of late 90s booklets by Leisure Arts. They do come up on eBay. Um, from time to time if you want them and it's stitched in DMC it is filthy because I've been stitching it now for three years and it's huge so you can't keep it clean but when I have finished it I'm going to pop it in the washing machine like can you see the stains there I think that's tea stains it's just going to need a really really good wash although to be honest actually that line is going to be cut off so I'm going to leave a fringe and there is some staining right down here but I think this massive, massive stain there, I think I can cut that off. I don't think I'll need that. So there we go. So that was my other one. This, I think I am going to get back out in July for a week. And then in a week, I reckon I could finish that block easily. Obviously, it's nearly done. That's literally one night stitching. And then I think I could finish the penultimate square, which would leave me one square to go by the time I get to August. That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? That, that would be pretty cool if I could finish this at the beginning of August. It has kind of, because I got so focused on this, it has messed up my whip go. Um, I think most people have heard of whip go. Whip Go is a bingo inspired cross stitch challenge set up by Jessie of Jessie Marie Does Stuff. If you want to know more, I suggest you go and check her out on Instagram or FlossTube. But the likelihood you are here, if you've never seen any Jessie Marie, is unlikely because she is a star. Um, anyway, what was I saying? It's messed up my Whip Go because I got so focused on this. I'm kind of ahead of on this on my whip go but I'm behind on other goals on my whip go if that makes sense I'm hoping it'll all come out in the wash by the end of the year but who knows right the next three things I have to show you are all new starts and I usually do the knitting after the cross stitch but today I'm going to mix it up because I'm super excited about the cross stitch new start so I want to save the best to last so, <clears throat> having said that cross stitch is my jam, and cross stitch is my jam, and knitting's like a secondary thing, and it is, knitting is a secondary thing. And so therefore, I was only going to have one knitting whip, because, you know, I didn't want to end up in a situation where I have a bajillion cross stitch whips and a bajillion knitting whips. So that was all going really well, until I finished that cowl, and then I ended up casting on two knitting projects. Partly because the knitting project I intended to cast on, I needed to order some knitting needles for, it turned out. But then I wanted to do some knitting. So I cast on one thing, and then I cast on the thing I was actually going to cast on. So, 
the first thing I cast on was a scarf. This is the Roulard Scarf by Pixen DK. I bought this as a kit from um, Loop London when I went there, oh, just before Covid, beginning January 2020, I think I visited. And I bought this kit. Um, so it came with all the called for wool, which is, let me tell you what it is. Can I tell you what it is? It's this, it's, it's, it's Peruvian wool. So I'm trying to find some English instructions. I think it's, 50% llama and 50% lamb's wool, I think. But the, it doesn't... So it says 50% llama, but it's not spelt with an H. L-A-M-A, -A, which I assume is llama the animal, particularly given it's from Peru. And 50% virgin wool, which again I assume is lamb's wool. It's not a... Not how... If that is what it is, that's not how I would have translated it into English, but... You know, English is not their first language, I'm assuming, so, you know. I can't do any Peruvian. Do they even speak Spanish or Portuguese in Peru? Or neither? See, my ignorance. My ignorance. Uh, and it's called Ca... Can I get that to focus? We go for cause. Well, it nearly did then, didn't it? Too close, too close. Doesn't want to, does it? Anyway, it's called Camarose, this wool, and it's quite um, furry. Anyway, it came with the kit, and I think there were like eight different colours of wool. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's like eight or ten different colours of wool. Anyway, so I cast it on, and it's really little stitches, and it's a ribbed scarf. And this is how far I have got. Okay, I'm going to focus on the wool. Oh, nearly. There. It doesn't want to, does it? My camera is not doing good focusing today. Kind of trying there. Can you see it? Can you see how fluffy it is? It was a lot fluffier wool than I was expecting. It's kind of really kind of hairy. Because um, in the ball, it doesn't, it doesn't look that hairy in the ball. It's only when I started knitting with it. I'm focus on the ball. There you go. See, it doesn't look particularly hairy in the ball. But once I started knitting with it, it's actually quite a hairy kind of... It's not like mohair hairy, but it's that kind of... That kind of thing, but less. Anyway, so that's where I am with that. I haven't got onto the second colour yet, but I am ribbing away. So that's the first one. Sometimes knit on that when my kids are in the bath sat there in the bathroom with them while they're mucking about. My kids like long baths. And that's what it'll look like when it's done. So if I can fold it, oh, I'm not sure the instructions. Can you see? So it's quite colourful and it's quite long. And I suppose it's like a bit like a Doctor Who scarf. So that, I started that. And then the second thing I started was a cardigan. Do you remember I saying I'm going to start a cardigan? It's a kit from We Are Knitters. Now, they will send you the knitting needles with the kit, but they send bamboo knitting needles because they're mainly for beginner knitters. And I am a beginner knitter, but I do like a metal needle. I'm not too worried about all the stitches sliding off on me. Um, I seem to have got that under control now. And I just find it, I knit quicker on metal needles. Um, and then also, I'm quite a loose knitter, I think. I think most beginner knitters are quite... Um, tight knitters but I am not I am a very very loose knitter so I had to go down at least one needle size to get the correct gauge and I meant to bring you up my first um, gauge square gauge swatch you know what I mean knitters you know what I mean um, and it was so loose it was all floppy and you could see right through it I had to go yeah had to go down some needle sizes to to get to the right place. But this is a cardigan called the Tap Cardigan and it's stitched with We Are Knitters wool. It's actually cotton, not wool. There you go. In this navy blue. 
but that's from them and it's 100% cotton quite soft to stitch with although it does separate a lot when you're knitting I find that hard as a beginner so I cast on this it's a flat cardigan it's not knitting the round it's knitting five pieces so the back two pieces of the front and the two sleeves and then you have to seam it all together and here's where I am so this is the back and it is quite an open gauge cardigan anyway can you see and it's all just apart from this bit of ribbing at the bottom I don't know if you can see that it's hard to see apart from the ribbing at the bottom it's all in garter stitch so you can imagine as I'm a loose knitter and I've gone down I think two needle sizes to obtain gauge how loose and open it must have been when stitching with bigger needles so I've been doing that and I'll try and take one of those to the speech day tomorrow it might have to be the scarf and not the I prefer to take the cardigan um, but that's the needles are bigger and it's bigger and the needles are metal so they make more noise whereas these are on bamboo needles so it'll be quieter judgment call judgment call um, so I'll see, but yeah, I'll take one of them tomorrow. Okay. And John, I'm just going to pause the video because because I film on a camera. I can only film for 30 minutes in a go. I don't know why. So I'm just going to pause you because I've only got under four minutes left and I want to give the next thing justice. So I don't want to whiz through it. So back in a sec. Sorry about that. I am back. So the last thing is my new start that I started today. And this is for Crafting Kirsty, who is on Instagram and has a YouTube channel and I will link her below and this is her birthday sound today very today is her birthday so happy birthday Kirsty! Um, and she uh, said she was going to stitch this for her birthday I think they come up with this at the Essex Needles retreat that um, Kirsty went to earlier in the year which I didn't go to but I'm going to next year I'm quite excited about that um, yeah, I'm going to come up with that and then when she spoke about it on her YouTube channel I'm like, I'm going to join in too and she picked Queentown Sampler Designs Maria now how do we say this Huenaria Huenaria, Huenaria mm, still not sure 1833 to 34 I'm sorry you're getting glare it's a real photograph there can you see how amazing that is amazing so that's what she picked and I have kitted it up in all the DMC so it's originally charted in MPI I think yeah in MPI silk um, but it does give a DMC conversion which is what I am using I don't know how faithful the DMC conversion is and she is a beast she's absolutely huge she is wait for this 447 stitches wide by 357 stitches high so this one is going to be with me for quite some time particularly as it's not my focus uh, so I'm stitching it on 36 count but even on 40 count you need more than a fat quarter of fabric to stitch this lovely lady she's big so I had a look around but I did have quite a big piece of 36 count in my stash just in white and I decided to dye it myself which I did this week and I am pretty pleased with the results now I don't think this would have been the colour everyone would have chosen but just looking at the photo almost kind of had that it's actually stitched on antique white but just to me just needed a little bit more than that and this, I'm not going to show you the stitching yet, but this is what I came up with. And that is showing pretty true. Um, it's not all as mottled as that. I did it in a jar, so some bits are very mottly. Some bits very not mottly. Um, but it is just a huge, huge piece of fabric. But I'm really pleased with this kind of grungy, kind of grey green undertone it's got and you saw the stitching a little bit there so I sat down and started this um, just before lunch and just before I came to film and here is my very very little start I started in the middle not on the edges um, and here's where she is I have a little crown and two hearts which you won't be able to see from the picture I don't think because it's but can you see the angels, these two angels in the middle holding two hearts and there is a little crown above them 
So that's where I am. So I'm nearly there, basically. We'll be done in no time, as we stitchers say. Won't take me that much longer. Pretty much there. Um, yeah, so I'm happy with the fabric. Now fortunately, for a couple of reasons, and I'll show you why, I don't dye fabric a lot. Do you know, it wasn't too bad. Um, I did want it mottled, so I did it in a jar. Because the fact, I'll show you how big this piece of fabric is. It is huge, huge. It is over 30 inches wide, which is too wide actually. But I did dye it in a jar. And because it's so big, it only mottled, it only kind of dyed one half of the fabric. So after I dyed, um, like rinsed it and dried it and ironed it, I was like, no, it is, it is too like half and half. It'll look weird. So then I had to go back. I'd already obviously poured the dye away because I'm an idiot. I won't make that mistake again. And then I had to kind of dye the other half in the jar. Fortunately, I kind of did take note of what quantities of dye I used. And it has, it doesn't look like I've used two different dyes on there, I don't think. Um, but I am much happier now. So it was done in two stages. And then last night I brought it in off the line to iron, ready for today. But I'd left it on the ironing board. And my husband was out last night at... Uh, uh, where was he? he a work strength thing, and then he'd gone to his hockey team's AGM. Well, so he didn't rock home till like 11 or something, I don't know. It was late. And he's he put a wine glass down on my fabric. Right. Yeah? Hi everyone, sorry about that uh, brief interlude. We are actually now... Uh, where are we? Three hours later than when I was uh, filming earlier, yeah. Uh, so you heard my husband shout me and that was to say that my car was already at the garage so he decided uh, that had to be done right then. So <laughs> that wiped out all my not doing the first pick up time um, and so I've been running around collecting kids um, schools out, at least one school is out for summer uh, and I didn't cry uh, picking my youngest up from nursery partly because her teacher had already gone but I'm going to see her tomorrow at the prize giving so I may well cry then, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, right, what was I saying? I haven't got much left because I was nearly there when he yelled. Um, so I was saying, my husband, <laughs> you know, not flavour of the month right now, particularly, you know, interrupting floss tube, doing what I did, I'm about to tell you. Came in last night, about 11 o'clock, poured himself a glass of wine over my fabric that I'd put on the ironing board to iron. And can you see there, that blob, it's a bit fainter. That is, that is a blob of red wine. That is a red wine stain. And I didn't see it until today, so it was already dry. So I rinsed it out as best I can with cold water, uh, which is, you know, it's not ideal, but it is what it is. And then on the other side of the fabric, I managed to scorch it when I was ironing it this morning. Huh? Excellent. But um, they're both at the very extremes of the fabric and I did measure it again this morning and um, after I found the wine stain and that won't actually be on the pattern. There's enough that um, that will be some way away from the rest of it. Is that a wine stain as well? Is that just a bit of dye? Don't know. I don't think you can tell anyway because it's quite... Um, quite mottled and grungy, so yeah. But yes, that is my little start for Kirsty's birthday. I'll try and show it to you again. As I say that it's 36 count linen that I dyed myself with Rit dye and I'm using the DMC conversion. And that's it. That is all I have got for you today. So it wasn't, you know, a huge amount to come back and film. Um, yeah. I hope you're enjoying the warm weather. I hope you are enjoying your stitching. I will see you in two weeks when hopefully I will have a little bit more to... Oh, did I talk about plans? I'm not sure I did. I'm going to stitch on Maria for a week. I've decided because I'm starting to feel a little bit burnt out on some of my long-term goals. And I don't want to be because they need doing. So I think I'm going to stitch on Maria for the rest of this week. So I'm basically just giving myself a week. So I think it'll just be Maria. And then next week I'm going to get back to Snoopy and just push myself on Snoopy and we'll see where we get to. So by the time you see me, 
next I'll have done a week of stitching on Maria might be a little bit of out and about stitching to show you might be a bit of knitting to show you and hopefully some good progress on Snoopy who knows maybe even a finish huh yeah whatever keep dreaming mate um yeah so until I see you next time take care stitches bye